What's up, YouTubers? Chuck here, and in this series, I'll be covering board game mechanics. Games that use those mechanics and how to design around them. So just sit back, relax, as we explore the ruthless world of board gaming. Previously, we explored the ageless mechanic of trick-taking. In this episode, we'll take a look at auctions and bidding, two mechanics that often go hand-in-hand -hand with trick-taking. Most of you are probably familiar with bidding from games like spades or poker. In spades, you're bidding on how many tricks you plan to take. You're awarded points if you achieve that goal, and lose points if you fail to attain it. This is very similar to most other trick-taking games, though scoring tends to look a little different in each. In poker, for instance, you're bidding on a single trick, rather than how many you think you can win. This is often used in gambling situations, but a monetary bid is not always necessary to enjoy the game. In many games, choosing your bid is fairly straightforward, but bidding games that have a take that mechanic, similar to teach you a rage from the last episode, could throw a wrench in your plans. So many times, making a bid is purely an educated guess. Simultaneous bidding is where every player reveals their bid at the exact same time. This is probably the worst design for bidding because it's the most random. It's been suggested that for games like this, the best strategy is to ha actually have no strategy at all. And that's just not fun. And as mentioned in our randomization mechanic, players always want some kind of control. There are ways around this though. In Get Bit, players are trying to swim away as fast as they can from a shark trying to eat them. You're giving seven cards numbered one through seven, and in each round, everyone will play a card simultaneously. The highest number swims the furthest away, but if two players tie, they don't move at all. What separates this from a game like Rock, Paper, Scissors is that you're given a diminishing number of cards to choose from instead of an unlimited supply. Players can keep track of who has played what card and develop a strategy. This is an excellent way of improving a bad mechanic. Blind bidding is very similar to simultaneous bidding, except that players are bidding in turn order rather than all at the same time. The advantage this provides is that you can observe other players' actions to deduce their strategy. For instance, in the Shakespearean-inspired Council of Verona, players will be siding with either Capulet or Montague by placing tokens face down on goal cards. Players will score points equal to the bid on the underside of that token at the end of the game if, and only if, that goal is met. Other players can deduce the values of the secret bids based on how much the player works to attain that goal throughout the game. The reason this works is because although the bid is hidden, there is still known information related to that bid. We'll start the bid at $1,000. One, two, three. So an auction is basically poker style bidding. Each player plays in turn order, the next player outbidding the previous one. This continues until all players have either passed or folded. If a player passes, they simply don't want to raise their bid again. But if a player folds, they have given up and are out of the auction. Now for sale has an interesting take on passing. And for sale, you're bidding to win the highest valued property. If you pass, you still have to pay half your current bid and take the lowest valued property available. I like how this allows players to still receive something in return while also giving a reason to battle it out for the best. So up until now, bidding has been fairly civilized, depending on who you're playing with. But let's talk about a game that was designed around the chaotic environment of a real auction. Going Going Gone is more or less a dexterity game, but the idea of simultaneous bidding is still the same. In this game, you have an assigned cube color, and you'll be throwing your colored cubes into cups, trying to bid on items you want in your collection. I made it. An auctioneer will count to 10, and the player who has successfully chucked the most cubes of his or her color into the appropriate cup wins the item. Basically, what makes this game so chaotic, well besides cubes flying everywhere, is that the bidding is timed. Trying to grab the items you want without spending too much money and keeping up with who's ahead in just 10 seconds is in all honesty cra crazy. Unless maybe your auctioneer takes like five minutes to count to 10. I don't see this happening. It's also possible that you may lose cubes over time, which personally for me is why I haven't purchased this game. Before we go, I do want to talk about one more auction design. It's quite a bit different from the ones previously mentioned. The way I could best describe it is a turn-based solo auction. 
Yeah, that works. So in Small World, you're fighting for huge tracts of land. It's basically a streamlined version of Risk, but better, way better. At its core, it's an area control game, but there's a neat little mechanic that decides what race you'll be playing. These guys are filed in line waiting for recruitment. The ones in front are free, while those further back in line will cost you more. Now I know this isn't auctioning in the traditional sense, but it is to a degree. What I think it offers over a free river selection, such as that in Ticket to Ride, is a way to keep the river refreshed with a stream of new items. <laughs> See what I did there? Otherwise, players tend to ignore an item worth little value to them. By offering a lesser card for a cheaper price, players will have to decide if it's worth taking over a better card that costs more. Typically, I see this used in games where an item provides some kind of variable action as a way of balancing. Speaking of balancing, some game designers auction off turn order to offset potentially disproportional powerful premier placement. Say that five times fast. Potentially disproportional pass potential powerful, potentially disproportional powerful placing of disproportion. You can see this in games like Five Tribes or Eight Minute Empire. It's not necessarily a bad thing, but sometimes it can feel a bit contrived. The designers knew that the first player had an advantage, so they tack on an auction mechanic. Many times it just doesn't fit, but I do understand its purpose. So if you're going to buy or possibly design an auction or bidding game, let's take a moment to review things to keep in mind. Stay away from simultaneous bidding or silent auctions that have an infinite number of choices. Remember that an unbalanced auction can feel random or unfair. Also, complicated scoring should be avoided. Too many ifs, ands, or buts can make it really difficult for players to develop a strategy. Lastly, don't forget that an auction river serves a specific purpose of managing resources and keeping a fresh option of choices available. Most importantly, always do your research before buying or selling a new game. Read reviews, play test your product, and ask around for others' opinions. Well, thank you for joining in on this episode of Board Game Mechanics. Don't forget to subscribe to Pub Meeple and give us a thumbs up. See you next time.